Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the first webinar of the STOK series. It's an hour to welcome everyone from all over the world. Before passing the floor to our guest, I will be briefly give us an overview. First of all, it is important to highlight that everything we discuss in this format is free to download on our homepage, worldskate.org slash skateboarding, or have a look at our blog. Further, the STOK series aims to give insights and bright understanding to the related topic. As always, it's clearly a tough challenge to wrap up tons of experience, research and common sense in just a few slides. Coming from this side, it's a personal pleasure to have here on my side today, Martin Karash, known as head of judging at World Skate, Matt Milligan, 20 years in war of skateboarding and judging on all kinds and levels of formats and known as skateboarder from back when New Deal was it. And my special honor, Vanessa Torres, legend on the board and the first ever recognized global female judge known, well known for SLS and many other contests around the world. Talking a little bit about the expectations, the target of the webinar is to provide the basic understanding of skateboard judging, which in a brief means nothing else than rank participants fairly, but enough from my side. Welcome, Martin. My pleasure. Please introduce you and your topic. Hello, and uh, thank you, Shiran. Thank you for your kind words and a nice introduction. My name is Martin Caras, and I'm here to speak on behalf of the World Skate International Federation. And along with my fellow colleagues, legendary skateboarders Vanessa Torres and Matt Milligan, I will try my best to provide you with some useful information for a better understanding of the overall concept of skateboard judging. There are many different types and styles of skateboarding. They are so much fun that they develop into specific disciplines like downhill, slalom, freestyle, vert, bowl, street or park. Every discipline of skateboarding has its own history. It has its own character and stories that are worthy to share. They are all beautiful disciplines and they are all part of our big skateboarding family. Starting with tonight's webinar, we are going to focus on street style and park style, the two disciplines that are now heading to the restart of the Olympic qualification season and later this summer, enter the global stage of the Olympic games in Tokyo. The very first Olympic games that will host skateboarding among its other traditional sports. So let's talk a little bit about how we got to where we are now. As Shiran highlighted in his introduction, skateboarding is a tool to rank athletes fairly. Being fair sounds clear and easy, but it wasn't always so. Skateboarding communities haven't always been connected together. For a long time, they were developing independently and sometimes completely isolated. And because of that, they have created their own cultures with unique local specifics that were not used anywhere else. This was the reason behind many local names for tricks, stances, or even obstacles, different competition formats and applied rules, and sometimes even scoring system with special judging criteria. Such distinctions made skateboarding difficult to follow and made it confusing even to the competing athletes. Athletes who sometimes did not understand what went wrong when looking at the event results. Since skateboarding was announced as one of the new Olympic sports, the need for a globally accepted and consolidated system arose, a system that would codify all the previously used but unwritten rules, unify all the diverse evaluation criteria, and use the best judging practices at skateboard events. We needed a system that could be applied and used at all competitions around the world, a system to provide fairness, clarity, and transparency to everyone 
everywhere and every time. Skateboarding was already huge and too important, but still missing this part. And that is the moment when World Skate emerged on the scene. Many of you may ask, hey, what is World Skate? Why is it even here? World Skate is the official governing body for the sport of skateboarding, an organization that is recognized by the International Olympic Committee to coordinate and conduct all affairs related with skateboarding under the newly achieved Olympic sport status. The goal of the Olympic movement is to contribute to building a peaceful and better world by educating you to sport without any discrimination and with mutual understanding, spirit of friendship, solidarity, and fair play. All of these values are very important and much needed human principles, especially in today's world. So what did World Skate actually do for skateboard judging? Well, World Skate took the initiative and hosted an international summit of global skateboard judges, field experts, and event promoters to consolidate the first general rules and standards used in skateboarding. This summit took place in 2018 in Nanjing, China, and the attending members were, among many others, people like Paul Zitzer from Tampa Events, Jason Rothmeyer from Vance Park Series, Matt Rodriguez from Street League Skateboarding, Mirko Holtzmiller from Ethnic European Open, Geno Gava from Japan, or Gary Chan and Danny Zhang from China. This group of skateboarding experts put together the first edition of a global judging criteria and competition rules. Rules unifying competition standards with event formats and scoring system requirements. World Skate aimed to create a judging system that is truly equal and fair to all skateboarders. Skateboarders of all possible genders, all races, all nationalities and ages. A system based on skateboarding only. To reach this goal, World Skate established the ISJC, the World Skate International Skateboard Judging Commission. ISJC's primary role has been to oversee and keep all regulations used in skateboarding up to date with the skateboarding's progression and needs of the competition environment. But how does WorldSkate know what's up in skateboarding? For all of us at WorldSkate, athletes are the most important part. This is why we have established the WorldSkate Athletes Commission. This commission is composed of skateboarders only. Among the members are Amelia Brodka, Alexis Sablon, Ben Hatchell, Rune Glifberg, Candy Jacobs, Ryan DeCenzo, or Mane Santiago. A group of professional skateboarders elected by and from the ranks of skateboarders competing at the Olympic qualification events. We meet with these athletes on a regular basis and we counsel in many areas of their professional expertise. We are constantly trying our best to create a competition environment where athletes matter the most and are satisfied. Only with this joint effort and our love for skateboarding, we are st strongly believe that we are on the right path. We are one family and we all love skateboarding. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Martin, for this insight into the history and evolution of skateboard judging. That was enlightening. Um, so now we know the setting, but really I'm curious to understand better what exactly is happening. So Matt, can you give us all some more and further information about that one? And before doing so, just be so kind and introduce yourself. Thanks, Ron, and thanks, Martin. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Matt Milligan and I'm excited to be here. Uh, so I've been judging skateboard events for probably about 20 years now. And I wanna say I've judged about 200 professional or top amateur contests across the world. And I'd definitely like to share a little bit of what I have learned about being a skateboard judge with all of you. 
Judging skateboarding is nothing new. It's existed since the very first skateboard competition was held. But over time, it's evolved. The one thing, though, that's remained true is not only to the progression, but also the preservation of skateboarding's history. World Skate's responsibility is to ensure that sanctioned skateboarding competitions run efficiently and fairly for all competitors. World Skate is responsible for safe conduct and accurate judging at all events. World Skate judging criteria was created to foster the continual progression of the sport while highlighting the importance of creativity and originality in a competition environment. Judging does not exist to standardize or create a definition of what is considered good skateboarding. It is strictly a tool to rank the performance of skateboarders against each other within any given competition. Due to the nature and complexity of skateboarding, it is critical that numerical values are never pre-appointed to tricks or runs. Skateboarding can't be measured or quantified based on preset criteria as it is in other traditional sports. Having a high level of skateboarding common sense is mandatory for anyone wanting to become a competitive skateboarding judge. Skateboarding common sense is a comprehensive understanding of the mechanics of every skateboard maneuver and their constantly evolving significance throughout the history of the sport. Skateboarding common sense is something that comes from years of personal experience, participation, discussing, and watching all aspects of skateboarding, as well as being involved with the culture associated with it. A judge with a high level of skateboarding common sense will be able to impartially distinguish and evaluate trick difficulty, complexity of lines, historical references, traditional backgrounds, in multiple ways of possible executions. Next, I'd like to kind of get into what some of the minimum requirements are to be a judge. And I'd like to welcome Vanessa Torres to help me dive a little deeper into that. Vanessa, can you elaborate a little more on what is needed other than skateboarding common sense to be a world skate judge? I would love to. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for everyone uh, being here with us today for this. And uh, hopefully you get a lot from, from what we've put together here for you guys. Um, so to start this off with uh, minimum requirements to be a judge, a uh, skateboard judge must have had personal skateboard experience. No person without any personal experience is able to become a judge at any world skate sanctioned event. They also must have a deep knowledge and understanding of all skateboard tricks along with their mechanics and difficulty. Now this does not mean that skateboard judges are required to execute all the tricks personally, but they must be able to tell the difference between them and fairly gauge their difficulty. As well as all skateboard judges on the international level must be able to communicate well in English with their fellow judging colleagues and other members of the event organization. World skate judges must also be at least 18 years of age. So there are many factors that are put in place to assist judges in determining the rankings throughout a competition. The judging panel will use these listed criteria to formulate a single score of a skater's performance within the competition. The score given is then used to compare their performance against other skaters' performances within that competition round only. Scoring must therefore be judged and measured by the same criteria at all times. One of the first criteria on this list is difficulty and variety of tricks. Uh, this would include the obstacle that tricks are performed on and uh, also the level of difficulty those tricks would be judged at. And then we get to quality of execution. Execution can be described as the way a trick was performed and even how it was landed. Fluidity, power, and aggression all factor into the execution of a trick as well as speed, height, and even the distance of the trick. 
Use of course. This is a uh, this is crucial here. It's a variety of obstacles skated may score higher than skating the same obstacle throughout a competition round. Using a course or obstacle in a difficult or unique way may score higher. We always recommend that you utilize the entire course to get the most benefit out of your, your performance. Flow and consistency. Flow could be described as a fluent and pleasant to watch skateboarding performance, while consistency could be the number of tricks performed within that competition. More tricks are typically better, but a higher number of tricks will not necessarily result in a higher point evaluation. The values of difficulty and execution are more decisive in formulating an overall score. Repetition, folks. Um... You know, this, it, it does, we see it a lot, it happens a lot, but this, yeah. So it's trick selection, variety and originality uh, being the main virtues in skaters competition performances. Uh, repetition of tricks or trick components, on the other hand, is considered as a lack of these qualities and potentially may receive a lower score. So keep it original out there. <laughs> Thanks, Vanessa. So all of the judging criteria that we just mentioned is then analyzed by the entire judging panel with an objective to create an overall impression. An overall impression is a way to evaluate the whole performance with all elements of the criteria combined, but not placing a major emphasis on any one single facet. The rationale for utilizing the overall impression judging system is to judge more effectively by taking the whole performance into consideration rather than a specific criteria area. And then before any competition can even begin, a judging panel must be selected. It's important that, uh, you know, competition planning should take nationality, gender, and experience into consideration when select selecting this judging panel. And being an active participant of skateboarding is the most important factor when choosing a panel of judges. As mentioned earlier, having a high level of skateboarding common sense is mandatory, as well as having judges that have experience within the competition environment is an added benefit when selecting the panel of judges. World Skate also recommends a balanced panel of five judges and a head judge. This size panel creates a more comprehensive evaluation of every skater's performance. So then we get to the part of how judges enter the scores. Communication between the judging panel is necessary. It helps ensure all information is taken into consideration and creates the most accurate evaluation of the skater's performance. We will now go over the process used by the judging panel to input final scores. Observation, observing the entire performance by the judging panel in real time as it is being performed, as it is happening. Notation, in a competition environment, the judging panel will take notes to provide a detailed recap of every performance. Analysis. The judging panel will analyze the performance and compare it to every other performance within that competition round. Scoring. The entire judging panel will submit scores based on the judging criteria that is used to evaluate all skaters. Each judge will issue a score based on their overall impression of that run and or of that trick. Validation. Every score is evaluated by the head judge to make sure the judging panel is aligned. Super important. The head judge can then finalize the imputed scores. And confirmation. This occurs once the head judge has finalized the imp imputed scores from the entire judging panel. Public display of score. I know y'all get excited after, you know, you've skated your heart out, whatnot, you're ready for that, you know, 
display. Um, after scores are finalized, they are published for all skaters, coaches, and the general public to view. So then you may ask, how are the skaters then ranked accordingly? Every skateboard judge must understand the importance of their respected scores given out during any competition. For every World Skate Sanction event, five total judges are used to input scores and a head judge oversees the entire judging panel. After a skater's performance, each judge will submit a number-based score to evaluate that performance within that competition round. As well as both the highest and lowest scores submitted getting dropped, they will not count. The remaining three scores are then added together and the total sum is averaged to provide the final score. It is very important that judges use the full scale and are not afraid to give high scores to good performances and even low scores for bad ones. Qualified judges should be aware of the current global level of skateboarding and judge each skater fairly against that benchmark. Even though the score of every single skater is crucial, the ranking in which they receive is the most important factor. Experienced judges can adjust their scoring scale to the current competition to assure the correct ranking is achieved. Once again, judging is a tool to rank athletes fairly. Cannot stress that enough. It is a tool. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> wow, that was insightful. A lot of stuff. So in a brief, um, skateboard judging is a tool to rank fairly, right? Well, this explains a lot, but mm, let's skip over to the slide with the Q and A's. Um, our participants had the chance to pre-summit some questions. We chose the most one relevance ones, and now we are more than excited to ask our guests, what are the answers? So, Matt, this one is for you. The ultimate, definitive, groundbreaking answer to the question, what is better, front side or back side? Please enlighten us all. Yeah, so th this is actually a, a pretty common question that we get, you know, what's better front side or back side. Um, and and there, there really is no definitive answer to that. Like, everyone has tricks that are more natural for them to perform than other tricks. Um, for some people doing a trick front side versus doing a back side is, is easier. And, and for for other people, it's the exact opposite. And it's actually harder. Therefore, the answer it could always change kind of depending on the athlete, the obstacle and the trick performed. Thanks, Matt. Um, well, Vanessa, I've got a good one for you. How she, uh, how come she did not make it? She was, she's just a little girl. I watched my little friend skating and I think she have made it and even scored higher. What do you answer to this question? Okay, personally, I love, I love to see where skateboarding is every day. And we get to experience that every time we step into, you know, this, these, these competitions. So I love seeing these little humans out there ripping and giving it their all. And, um, you know, it hits close to home, obviously. Uh, but ultimately at the end of the day, uh, every, every skater is judged equally within the competition round and is only judged on their skateboarding performance. Age and gender is never used as part of our judging criteria. Um, I just get excited about like, keep coming back, keep doing it, keep loving it. We love skateboarding, we love to see it. And um, that's one of the exciting things for us is that we get to watch these, you know, these young humans um, evolve and progress uh, within, you know, this field that we're all a part of so yeah there's this is strictly skateboarding that we that we are judging so it's it's not personal i promise i love it but you know we got a job to do out here so yeah thanks vanessa martin please i've got one for you why is she not in the final when she was skating so good at the lower end of the time can you give an answer to this question 
Oh yeah, thank you, Sharon. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> we get those questions uh, very often too. I would say that no matter what contest you go, skaters should always use the whole course, as we call it, the field of play, and skate everywhere. Using all obstacles in the course, connecting them into lines of various tricks is what forms a good and balanced overall impression. If you skate in one place, you limit your performance to a small portion of the course or to a section or an obstacle, it doesn't create the overall impression that meets all the necessary judging criteria. Therefore, there's your answer, Shiran. Thanks. Well, as I see, as I see. Um, Vanessa, I've got a good one for you. What do you would answer to this question? He bailed right after the buzzer. So does that one count or doesn't count? What is what is this, what is happening right there? <laughs> uh, thanks, Sharon. So <laughs> there, there's a lot going on, you know. And I mean, just lots of skating, lots of just like lots of high energy, and um, sometimes the skater doesn't even hear the buzzer go off. You know what I mean? And also, you have other people that are, you know, watching that may think that this trick happened after the buzzer or before the buzzer, it doesn't matter. Um, basically what it comes down to is if a skater starts a trick before the buzzer, the make or bail are both counted in the overall scoring. So if you land a trick, you start a trick and you land it, we salute you. Also remember that if you do start a trick before the buzzer and you bail, we also take that into consideration when putting in our scores. So, yep, they both count. I, I, okay, understood. Oh, Stay my. on your board, stay on your board, you know? Whatever happens. <laughs> oh, Martin, I've got a nice one for you. Talking about the nightclub, um, the question is, but this was a nightclub we asked last year at the streak. How come that she got only six points this year? for that trick. Wow, thank you, Sharon, again. Seems like I got the best ones <laughs> to answer. <laughs> but hey, uh, we need to explain and educate. So uh, I would just continue with what Matt explained earlier. There are no points firmly assigned to tricks in skateboarding. That's rule number one. We also don't have any scoring categories why? Because skateboarding is constantly evolving. New tricks are being discovered and new obstacles designed. Tricks with assigned points or categories will just not reflect the nature, evolution, and the progression of skateboarding. On the other hand, the judging scale is always the same. Every day, every year, it has only 100 points or in street, 10 points. It doesn't flex doesn't shrink, it doesn't grow, it stays the same. And we need to fit all the skaters with all their tricks of today to this scale, but we also need to fit all the future skaters and all their future tricks to come to the same scale. Therefore, I would say, look at the, look at it as a chart where all the skaters are ranked for their performances measured by the same judging criteria, it evolves. What is a nine club this year? Will probably be a six club next year. That's how it goes. Catch me in the six club. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vanessa, um, this next one then is for you, come on. Um, when we're talking about judging, um, what are the judges writing exactly? How are they using these notes? Can you give us some insight for that one? I mean, I pretty, I thought that everyone knew that we were writing love letters to each other about how good of a job we're doing in there. Um, no, just kidding. Um, so what are the judges writing? Um, how are they using these notes? Like, how are we using these notes? Um, it's super crucial for judges to take notes and to be able to kind of go back to those notes um, on, all the, on all the performances because we're seeing a lot just, hours and hours of skateboarding which is awesome but also this note taking is so crucial because we're able to go back to it look it over have a conversation 
and it be as effective as possible with the scores that we are putting in. Um, the objective of note taking is that at any given time during or after the competition, um, a judge who took the notes can easily like revert back to that and provide a detailed, like a detailed recap of every trick and the way they were executed. Nice, thanks, Vanessa. So Matt, a serious one about limitations seems to be. The question is, are the skaters able to do the trick they want during a competition? So the question is, are skater, skaters able to do the trick that they want to? Yes. Um, yeah, of course. This is skateboarding. Skateboarders and skaters are absolutely free to do any trick that they want to do. The only thing that we kind of put, put in mind is um, they have to do the tricks within the course or the field of play. And they also have to do it within the time limit that's allocated. But other than that, like do any trick you want. We encourage it. We like to see it. We like to see smiles on your face and having a good time. This is skateboarding. Okay, thank you. Um, the last one, I see here one last um, from the Perigia stated ones. This one is for Martin, obviously, because you got all the good ones today. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Martin, tell us, are helmets mandatory in both disciplines? Wow, I love that one. Thank you, Shiran. Uh, Always for you. Let's, uh, let's start with uh, answering it like this. The skater's safety is the main objective for World Skate at all sanctioned events. For everyone, the health must always come first. Injuries, bails, collisions are happening. And we want the skaters to be safe and enjoy skateboarding. Therefore, helmets are mandatory for all skaters in the park discipline. If you are 12, if you are 22, if you are 35, you got to wear a helmet. In street, on the other hand, only skaters who are under 18 years of age must wear a helmet. Everyone who's over 18, you don't have to wear a helmet. Using any additional safety equipment is up to the skater's decision and its free will. If you feel like you need those knee pads, if you feel like you need to protect your elbows, that's up to you. Whatever makes you comfortable, whatever makes you skate better, whatever makes you feel safer and enjoy skateboarding, it's up to you. There is no shame in wearing a helmet or other safety equipment. As long as it helps to protect your life and the lives of others, just wear it. We all want to enjoy skateboarding. And the judges, they will never lower their scores to a skater for wearing pads or helmet. This is it. We want to be safe, be happy, and enjoy skateboarding all together, Shiran. That's what we aim to write. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, as we are just arriving um, to the end of the pre-seated uh, answer, pre-posted -pre questions, um, they're popping in some nice ones right now uh, here in our live chat or live uh, Q&A. And one is bustling a little bit in my mind because it's like so special. And I guess it's from someone, the guy is called or the person is called Ali Tamara. And maybe Matt, you can answer this one. Is there a judge from each continent during the Olympic games? Uh, we definitely take in the, the balance of different nationalities when, when choosing the judging panel. Um, for the actual Olympic games, we're still working through that process of who the actual judges will be for the actual Olympic games, but we'll do our best to have as many continents represented as possible. Thank you. So I have another little question for Matt um, from Alexander Vaz Costa from Brazil or mainly in California, as I know you. Um, he asked, after competitions, Will there be a way to the athletes or bodies of representatives to evaluate the judgment and the scores, not by personal opinions, but grounded by the world skate criteria, of course? Yeah, um, if I'm understanding this correctly, or if you're able to access the judging scoring sheets, 
um, is what it sounds like. And all of our information is available to the public um, within a few days after each event. Um, so all that information can be shared and you're able to see the actual scores. And one which uh, I think this one is this one is for Vanessa. Come on, do we have any penalties or negative markings? I'm not sure. I'm under. What do you mean negative mark? What? It seems How can like. Elaborate is, there, on that? is there anything which will be affecting your vote or your overall impression negatively? Kind of like a marker or something like I don't know. Yellow pens. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, I don't, it's not, nothing is, from my perspective, like, no, I'm not taking anything personal. So it's, uh, you know what I mean? What you choose to do out on the course during your time, that's your time. Um, you know, as, as you know, a, a global level judge, along with Matt as well, um, you know, obviously good sportsmanship, like, you know, keep it, keep it, keep it clean and real out there and, and kind. And, um, yeah, we, we just, we're just judging skateboarding here, obviously. Um, you know, we don't want to see you throwing your boards out into the crowd and like hurting people. Um, that's the only thing that kind of comes to mind right now is if I would negatively mark something, but ultimately, um, you know, thankfully we haven't seen any of that. Um, so, yeah, that's that's those are my thoughts on that. Um, if I'm understanding the question correctly, which I'm, it's, it seems a little um, vast. So that's exactly the way how I understood the question. Thanks for your answer. Um, by the way, the last question, I don't know, Matt or Martin, um, how would a judge or judges evaluate and rate tricks that has never been done or seen before? used in a competition so yeah um just speaking on behalf of you know my personal experience as a skateboarder and even as a judge like uh we always like to see the level increased you know we like to see new tricks being brought to the table and especially in the competition environment um and and we'll judge those tricks like accordingly you know from our knowledge and from the judging panel's knowledge against all the other tricks that, that were performed that day um, but yeah, like we, we love to see new things, NBDs, um, we get excited and it's, it's great to see, and it's great for the progression of skateboarding. Thank you, Matt. So um, as I see, we come to an end, even with the question from our audience. Um, this means sadly, even the end of the first episode of the STOK webinar series. Please feel free to leave a comment in the chat. Don't forget uh, to check up your follow-up email that will come along with more details. And don't forget that you will find all documents and all relevant um, stuff on worldskates.org slash skateboarding or on our blog and keep informed via our social medias. For any, any additional information about skateboarding and the world skate, please feel free to check your federation, organization, um, NGB, whatever with more detailed information. And we're checking the chat even now for, mu for mu more questions and we will um, answer them in the follow up email too. And we will be soon here again. And so stay tuned, stay healthy and don't forget to keep the hate outside of skateboarding. See you all soon. Thanks everyone, thank you so much. Thank you guys.